Okay. Um, we are supposed to take a look at the first half of section two, six dash two. All right, so in other words, six dash two A. All right, so again, if I don't split it in the same way and you end up doing the My Math Lab questions and you have questions that we didn't cover, you can go out there and download six dash two B and then you should be able to find some examples, okay? Now, what I thought we would do first though is to kind of start with at least some questions of things that we had talked about on Monday. We kind of introduced rational functions. We definitely talked about the horizontal and vertical, <clears throat> vertical asymptotes. <clears throat> in, a, in general, we've addressed domain, not so much range. All right, but some of these other questions, we may not be able to do them all right now, but we should at least be able to do a large portion of them, okay? So I do think I want to zoom in just a little bit farther. Maybe we can focus on those questions a little bit better. I still want the graph on there. Okay, so focus button one more time. Make sure it's focused. Okay, so horizontal asymptotes. If you have to do this type of question, all right, I will obviously give you either a rational function or a piecewise function, all right, and they will be indicated since it'll be printed in a printed version on paper pencil. You will actually see asymptotes, all right, as dotted lines for the most part. Now, this one, obviously is a vertical because the line runs up and down. Now, what will not be on a test or a scenario is I'm not gonna have the equation on the graph. Like literally, if you look this over really good for your vertical asymptotes, it gives you the equation right there. A lot of times, if you take graphs off the internet, they go ahead and label them. I will make sure that that is not there, okay? So you will have to know how to write the equation of this vertical asymptote. All right, which is x equals negative two. Okay, but on this one, on this particular graph, it is already listed for you. Okay, now the only time that you won't see a dotted line for an asymptote is if it happens to be one of the axes, the x axis or the y axis. All right, if we remember our definition, all right, here's our graph, it's coming down and then it's getting infinitely close to the x axis right here. All right, this portion of the graph is coming up. And then it's not as close, but it's just because they couldn't go out as far. You can tell that ultimately it is going to get really, really close to that x-axis and not cross it. Okay, so what's not in this graph is the horizontal. It's not showing, all right? But there is a horizontal asymptote, and that has the equation of y equals zero because it's going through zero on the y-axis. So that one is y equals zero. All right, so if as long as your asymptotes are not either the x or the y axis, you will see dotted line. If it turns out that one of the axes is an asymptote, then they don't try to put a dotted line on top of the axis because it's just too hard to see. Okay. All right, now um, domain, we've been dealing with quite a bit with domain. All right, we've done domain of, I think, Maybe not square root functions yet, but we've definitely did domain of the rational functions where we took that denominator, set it equal to zero, and then tried to find exclusions. Okay, so obviously we don't know the function of this. We don't know, you know, if it's x squared plus 2x minus 1 over x squared plus 4. I mean, we don't know the function itself, but we have the graph. If I know domain is all of the x values left and right, then I just have to look for vertical asymptotes, all right, because vertical asymptotes, all right, the function doesn't ever cross it, right? So at that vertical asymptote, the function never crosses it. So that means negative two is an excluded value, all right? So that's one of my excluded. If you think back to what we did on Monday, this would be one of my excluded values, all right? Now, if I take a look at this portion of the graph, it's solid up until it gets to right here at x equals two, and then we see an open dot. All right, which we were using open dots when we were drawing our domain when we found it algebraically to represent numbers that we wanted to exclude. All right, so this tells me that two is also excluded. All right, so vertical asymptotes and holes um, are exclusions from the domain. All right, so that's a good way to look for your domain from a graph. So going left to right, 
every x value is included from negative infinity all the way up to negative two, we skip over the negative two because of the vertical asymptote. And then this portion of the graph tells me that every value to the right of negative two is included, except for that value at two because of the open dot or the hole right there. So in other words, I have in on this one for domain, I have two exclusions. All right, x cannot equal negative two, x cannot equal two. Those are my two values. So if I wrote that, we can think of it just like we did before. All of these values, all of these values, all of these values, because I'm skipping over two different numbers. So it's going to look like negative infinity all the way up to negative two. Negative two is not included, so curvy bracket. I skip over the negative two. On the other side, I pick up with the negative two, and then I go all the way to this two. I have to skip over that two. So curvy bracket, skip over the two, there's my u, and then all of the values to the right of that. So two to infinity. Okay, so what we did on Monday with rational functions and domains, all right, we did that algebraically. Now we're kind of taking a look at a graph here. We ought to be able to kind of do that. Okay, I probably will skip range for right now. Um, let's see, the next question says, for what values of x is the function undefined? Okay, so we can do this. So we'll skip this one for right now. We'll do it later after we've had a little bit more exposure. Okay, so five, for what values of x is the function undefined? Well, this question really corresponds to the domain question because vertical asymptotes are holes, are exclusions, all right, or in other words, are undefined for the function. So whatever x values you skipped over in your domain, those are your x values that are going to be undefined. So answer would be x equals negative 2, x equals 2. All right, we have two of them. I usually write it just like that, x equals negative 2, x equals 2. Those are my two x values. All right, I could probably use set notation as well. Lots of different things like that. Um, we can do six, I think now, just because of what I told you up here, um, describe what is occurring at x equals two. All right, well, I used the word up here, it's a vocab word, there is a hole, all right, the function is undefined, so you could say there's a hole, you could say function is undefined. Okay, so a couple different ways you could write it that would be acceptable. Um, Let's see, we can still see question seven. How many times does the line y equal two cross the graph? Okay, well, so for that one, I'm gonna use a different color here. All right, so the equation for y equals two, that's gonna be a horizontal line that goes through two, right? So here's two. So I'm gonna put an imaginary line right there. Ooh, I missed my two, but close enough there. All right, so that's a horizontal line, y equals two. How many times does it cross the graph? Okay, well, clearly it's not gonna cross down here anywhere. It crosses right here, which is one time. And then because this hugs down here, this hugs down here, it's not gonna cross any other places other than that one spot. So how many, time, how many times does it cross? It crosses one time. Um, let's move it up a little bit. Once I keep the graph on there, we're good. Okay, so. We have talked about zeros of the function. We've talked about zeros. The zeros are the same thing as the, let's put this in parentheses, x-intercepts. Okay, we've also used um, the word real solutions. All right, so they're all the same spot. They are all the same location on the graph. So basically x-intercepts, oh, none. <laughs> it doesn't cross the x-axis, right? Because it's, a, it's an asymptote. So the graph comes up here doesn't ever cross the x-axis here, doesn't ever cross the x-axis here, so there are none. How many are there? Zero, none. Wasn't expecting that. Okay, list the x-intercepts, okay? Well, if there are no zeros, then there's no x-intercepts because zeros, x-intercepts, real solutions are all the same thing. So list the x-intercepts as ordered pairs. All right, well, there are none. Well, that was a pretty easy question. All right, and then list the y-intercepts, okay, the y-intercepts, all right, and then the, the, the one, the part that people miss is it does say as ordered pairs. So if you just tell me 
that, okay, right there is where the graph crosses the x axis or the y axis. That's a half. So if you just write down one half, it's wrong because you didn't write it as an ordered pair. That dot right there is a dot on the graph. It is where the graph crosses the y axis. So the ordered pair that goes along with that is zero, one half. And that would probably be the number one reason why people miss those, okay, is because they don't write it as an ordered pair. And they don't always ask for it as an ordered pair. Sometimes they do, but they don't always. So that's where you just really have to pay attention to reading those directions. Okay, so bottom line, I did every question except the range. We might as well do the range. Have we done range in homework and in my math lab? You don't think we've done range yet? Okay, so let's leave it then. All right, because uh, we will take pictures like this. We will take graphs of rational functions and we will practice a lot so we can touch on range later. All right, the main thing I think is the domain that they're trying to get because they want to introduce those vertical asymptotes for sure. They want to introduce holes, that sort of thing. All right, so I just thought we would kind of take a look at this. This question right here, all right, is something that I will put on the next written test. All right, the only difference is I'll change the graph. The questions pretty much stay the same. All right, I can, and as we do more of these practice questions, um, I can come up with some other creative questions, but for the most part, that's a really good list of the questions that I'm going to ask. Okay, and then the, the deal is this picture just changes because I use different graphs. All right, so I uh, take care of that. Well, a little 15 minutes.